we'll just look at that uh, that beginning position with the with the hands on the on the knees. While this may look like a, a nice resting position, it also ensures that um, her torso is actually in front of her feet, and, and thus she can't be on her heels, um, and, and and thus is, is going to be on her toes. So she's actually ready to move. And and the other thing that the hands uh, at the knees does is it. it puts her in a more neutral position as well so that she is ready to move as opposed to hands together or um, actually out to the side where you'd probably not be playing the ball. So we'll start playing this uh, video again. We'll just go frame by frame. So as, as the ball uh, is being tossed, you can see now she's actually getting in a position to start moving. The ball tosses in the air. And what you can actually see her doing is she's starting to move forward. So she's not, she's not uh, remaining stable uh, or, or still at all. What she's actually going to do is, as the ball is contacted or about to be contacted, she's going to generate a split step right there. And what that actually allows her to do is to stabilize herself so that, so that she can actually be aggressive with her pass and move in, in any direction that she wants to, as opposed to um, if she had remained still, she would have actually had to um, generate some sort of movement to get in that position. So she's actually in, in a better position so she can remain stable uh, while still moving um, as the ball is being contacted so she doesn't have to be exactly still um, in order to still remain that stability for the passing um, and as as we continue to play through you can see her hips are getting nice and low down getting below the height of the ball and then at contact you can see that she's not she's not really taking the ball too far out of her, uh, out of her midline um, obviously it's a jump serve so it's, it's going to be a bit hard to judge but she's keeping that in as, as tightly to her midline as possible and she's having to move her body into a passing position or posture and so uh, we want the feet actually moving we want the muscles and the body dynamically moving and so as you're going to see as she comes into this passing posture she's doing it from a moving position which is optimal we want athletes to be dynamic to move sport is about movement and so we want to teach movement as she comes into that posture then, that position, her feet are moving and she's going to basically spread her legs, get into a wide base so she can be very stable, very balanced. And as you see that happening, you're going to see her hips lower, or what we call lower and load. And one of the things we want to start talking about then is that, that her hips ability to drop uh, comes in from mobility or flexibility in her hips and as her hips are dropping her spine is staying upright and there uh, ideally then or at the start of the year what you'll see us working on from a strength conditioning perspective is the ability for these athletes front row or back row back row in this case to have the flexibility and mobility if you would through her hips to be able to drop her hips and so that the bend is occurring a lot at the hips, you'll see the knees are bending as well, but that the hips are lowered. And as the hips are lowered, her spine and chest are not dropping, right? That we have what we call stability, the ability for her to maintain her spine and spine position with her chest up to be able to see the ball and address the ball, contact the ball, pass the ball without her lower back rounding and arching forward. So it becomes very important that she has the ability, the flexibility in her hips to drop her hips down and have the strength and stability through her lumbar spine, her lower back if you would, to be able to drop down into that position and be stable, be coordinated there. Again, if I pause it right now, um, one subtle thing that she does is she actually takes a step backwards first. So she may end up actually in the same spot where she was just standing, but by taking that one step backwards, it allows her again, as, as the hitter is going up for contact, to again jump forward, take, take a split step, and be aggressive again with her pass. And you can see how far down she is with her hips. She's, she's nice and low, and she's able to get underneath the ball and then relax with, with the arms to, to take the energy off the ball. But you can see in that position right there, good solid platform, hips are low underneath the ball, leading to another successful dig. Once again, we're going to see the same thing. We see her first, her feet moving from a dynamic movement down into this wider position. And what we start to watch now is we can look at her lower body, uh, her hips and legs, and the angle with her upper body is about a 90 degree angle. We see her hips 
start to drop down low now. And her ability, she makes a couple little hops here, but if you look at the relationship between her upper body, her spine, if you would, and her hips, that angle really doesn't change much. She's able to move and hop forward, and that angle between her hips and upper body remain pretty constant. Now she comes down actually into the passing posture, her hips drop low and we're, we're watching we're, and, and we're looking for her ability to drop her hips below knee level. She has great mobility through both of her hips by getting her feet out wide, knees out wide, and her hips and spine maintain the same angle, not bending at the lower back but actually bending at the hips and knees and ankles to get down into this very low passing position and posture. It takes a lot of flexibility through the hips, through the groin, um, and ability to get down and control that, what, once again, what we call stability to get down into that posture, get into that position, play the ball, and come up out of there.